So here I am, walking all alone, out in the deep dark forest, with my life savings with me, hoping I don't run into any bad guys who want to try and steal it from me. Uh-oh, looks like there's a bad guy right there. <laughs> Got him. Let's see if I can find any other bad guys. Any other bad guys out here. Oh, there's one. There's a bad guy trying to take my money. <laughs> any more bad guys out here. Oh, there's one right there. Got him. <laughs> Are there any more bad guys out here? There should be a couple more out here somewhere. Oh, there's one right there. And there's one more right there. <laughs> and that's it. Hey, Terry here. Welcome to another video. Yeah, uh, I know I was going to do a video on uh, how to make your own percussion caps at home. And I am going to be doing that one. In fact, I uh, plan on starting that later on uh, this afternoon. But, a little surprise happened. Uh, as you know, yesterday was Father's Day and I must have been doing something right because look what I got. That's right. My very first and to date only 1860 Colt Army Revolver 44 caliber with a, not a three inch barrel, not a five inch barrel, not even a seven and a half inch barrel, a full length eight inch barrel. How about that? 44 caliber. Is that a thing of beauty or what? So I had to get this thing out into the deep dark forest and try it out and man has this thing got some kick behind it. Huh? Is that cool or what? That is something else. And don't worry, um, I will be taking all of these out. Um, always leave the forest as clean or cleaner as you found it. So these will be getting uh, taken out and recycled properly. The uh, Colt 1860 revolver, 44 caliber. This is just a, this is just a monster gun. And I was going to stand out here and bore you with a uh, long and excruciatingly detailed history of the development of the 1860 Army, which I can do for the masochists of you out there if you really want me to. But uh, let's just say that a lot of people at that time considered the 1860 Army to be uh, the best black powder firearm made at the time. Actually, it was all black powder. They didn't even call it black powder. They called it gunpowder. There was no smokeless powder. It was all just gunpowder. But uh, even today, a lot of people consider this to be the most beautiful cap and ball revolver ever made. Maybe not the biggest, maybe not the most powerful, you know, not like a Walker or a Dragoon, but still an effective killing range of, well, 225 feet, maybe 300 feet which for a sidearm is of any kind really is not bad. It is a big, heavy, military assault weapon. It's not a cowboy gun. It was not a um, ordinary holster carry gun among civilians for self-defense. Uh, it was intended for the military. The military picked up on it. They loved it. They fell in love with it. Colt manufactured over 200,000 of these things between 1860 and 1873, and it's based on the, uh, the 1851 36 caliber Navy frame. 
But as I said, that's for another video. That's the excruciatingly detailed video of the history of the development of Colt firearms from uh, 1838 up to 1875, if you ever really want me to go into it. Let's just say for now that uh, this is one hell of a gun. I just got it. This is only the second time that I've shot it, as you can tell. I don't even know how it's grouping yet. I haven't even shot it at a target to try and find out if it's shooting high or to the right or low or, you know, whatever, which I need to do. Uh, and I'm going to um, in this video. But uh, after that, in fact, the uh, accuracy test is coming up next. And then after that, uh, we got to find out how much damage this thing can do, right? And you know what that means, meet target. So stick around. Hey, I'm back. So, uh, let me apologize right up front for uh, my first attempt at an action shoot sequence. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that, I'll get better at it, don't worry. But uh, right now, I'm back in the test range and I'm going to find out just how accurate this Colt Army revolver actually is. And I'm going to shoot at this target about 50 feet away from a kneeling position using my trusty little shooting stick to try and take my lack of marksmanship skills out of the uh, equation so I can see where the revolver is grouping so when I do the meat target shoot, I'll know where to aim. So three rounds aiming the dead center on the target, 50 feet. Interesting grouping. Bullseye, high, high. So horizontally, it's good. Colts usually shoot high and to the right. This one's not shooting to the right any at all. If anything, it is shooting a little high. And who knows, I mean, I could have been aiming higher and higher and higher. I may have aimed here the first shot and then tried to get here the second shot and then tried to aim on this one the third shot without thinking about it. But um, it looks like it's pretty good on, pretty good, pretty accurate. So, let's set up for a meat target shoot and see what happens. And this is the Paul Harrell meat target. Now it consists of some pork bone-in shoulder blade steaks for pectoral muscles, followed by a set of pork ribs for the rib cage, followed by a couple of bags of lemons. Why lemons and not oranges? I don't really like oranges all that much, but uh, these uh, ribs are going on the grill after the shoot, and I like lemonade. So I got those to represent internal organs, and then we've got another set of ribs here on the back. Lift that up. Followed by my high-tech wooden post bullet stock. So we're going to shoot three rounds into that from 50 feet. So how did we do? Well, as you can see, didn't do these shoulder blade stakes much good. Yeah, that's one hole. Completely blew out the back here. Much more damage than that five inch Navy did. Look at that hole there. Look at that, it just destroyed that rib 
made a hole big enough I can stick my thumb through it. Came out the other side. Look at that hole. That is something in here. And it's just bits of bone all stuck all over it. Just look at that. You can see daylight through it. For the lemons, oh man, we got lemonade. I guess I'm in the shadows here. It's really bright sunlight. Just any orange, orange, any lemon that it hit, it just pretty much destroyed. Did some massive damage to a lot of them. Again, no real peripheral shock to speak of, but considerable damage to everything that it hit. Then, we got three holes here, here, and here, all the way through, and that, all three of them hit a, actually hit a bone. None of them went between the ribs. All three of them hit here, here, and here. And, uh, not only into the high-tech bullet stop, but completely buried. Um, I would have to take a knife and dig those out. I can't even see them. Not bad. Not bad. So what can we take away from all this? Well, first of all, I hope you could see that as well as I did. I'm going to have to get inside and uh, look at the video. The sun is just blazing out here today. And I'm using my phone camera and it doesn't respond well to direct sunlight. However you want to look at it, this is not a self-defense weapon. This is a killing machine. This thing was designed to put people down. And it's going to do it. So even by today's standards, I think this would qualify as a weapon to be feared. I sure as hell wouldn't want anybody pointing one of these things at me. So, next video. Can you make your own percussion caps at home? Sure. Again, question is, do you really want to? We'll see you then. Oh, and uh, happy Father's Day.